Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope. Today, we're going to be channeling with George Michael because it's his birthday coming up in June. And one of you who are viewers here at Above Life Channel made that remark in the comments. So you see, I always read your comments. So thank you for the comment. And so I do think it's important during Pride Month to celebrate wonderful, gorgeous spiritual energy like George Michael. And it's been a while since we chatted, so I thought we could have a chat. And so I wanted to chat with you. If you would come on in and be closer, that would be fabulous. Oh, I'm seeing you. You look, oh, I don't want to be rude and say you look older, George, but you do. You're showing up older, like your hair is shorter and you've got some like sunglasses on and your um, you have a little bit of stubble on your face. <laughs> nice five o'clock shadow. Um, gorgeous, of course, gorgeous. He says, thank you, thank you. He's showing me dogs, little dogs. Um, I see a lot of little dogs and I'm not sure if part of your legacy is did you support charitable organizations for animals or animal rights? Because I feel like lots of little animal, like uh, dogs, specifically dogs. And I see a little puffy dog, like it looks like a Pomeranian. I don't know for sure if that's what it is, but he's showing me his mom, his mother, mother had dogs as well. It looks like a mother's dog or mom's dog. And he's making me feel like he also has a sister. And there's like just dogs all over. Do animals love you. He says, animals are a good judge of character, is what George is saying. Animals are a good judge of character. They are. They can say so much about, about a person, how they, how they interact with animals. It says a lot about their nature, whether they're caring or, you know, if they have time for their, if they don't have time for an animal or their animals, then how are they going to have time for you? Animals have such an unconditional love. And that bond is something that is is quite beautiful. He says more more humans should have that. <laughs> okay. All right, George. So you have spent time in the United States, in Los Angeles, um, and in um, other parts of the world, in the United Kingdom. I think I feel like I feel like you're you must have had a home over there because it feels like it, and. I, I'm curious about where do you consider home? What do you consider home? He says, that's, that's a difficult question. That's a difficult question. It's, it, it depends on how you define home. He says, I never really felt quite comfortable at any one particular place. But I did enjoy the water. I really found that being by the water gave me some of my most peaceful times. And yet there's something to be said about being in the city. There's like this, the city has a life of its own. It's like a heartbeat. And that kind of energy really can just make you feel alive. And you can sort of get lost in a city. So there are different parts I think that I could, could relate to so as far as home more so i would say in the uk in britain um, perhaps more comfortable there and it's it's more like i could blend in a bit more there and even though the paparazzi are horrible in both places i i feel more of a A routine, a routine maybe you would say there. But I did spend a great deal of time and he's showing me Los Angeles. Like I, I'm, he's showing me traveling, like touring kind of a thing. He's showing me that, that, okay. That's a part of my life, a very, a large part of my life that I don't want to um, just kind of sweep under the rug. I want, I want to acknowledge, he says. He says, I have an appreciation for the opportunities that I had. 
and mostly the people that I was able to meet. He says, most of the people that I was able to meet, that's, there's something so wonderful when you can do what you love, what you live for and get paid to do it and to be around these incredibly talented, gifted artists is, it's very humbling and it's inspiring. It really challenges you to, to do your very, your absolute very best. George, will you talk to me about the, um, the, the tribute concert with Freddie Mercury. I don't know, and I, and I apologize viewers, I don't remember in my brain if we actually talked about that before, George, but talk to me about that a little bit because we have a lot of people who love Freddie Mercury and I know that you sung a tribute. You were part of the tribute concert to him. And can you talk about that a little bit? He says, it's more than a concert. It's more than just a performance. When you're invited to really share the stage with an icon, an energy that is that transcends life. And that's certainly what Freddie Mercury was. He was a, he was an unhuman. <laughs> he was like a, an entertainment machine and unmatched, unmatched, but sharing the stage with such a powerful energy because that is, that is truly what, what happens. In, in, and how it felt for me in that moment of being able to perform and sing his music with his bandmates, with, with an incredible audience of people who loved him so much. And you could just feel the love. I, it, it wasn't, I didn't feel pressure or nerves. I felt so honored so honored to have that opportunity and to sing and to represent such a an incredible legacy i i just i consider it, it was it was a gr incredible honor incredible honor mm -hmm. okay and david bowie was there too david bowie was also there did so did you have a connection with david bowie have you guys did you guys talk and he says we we knew each other we knew each other but it wasn't we weren't, um, we weren't particularly, uh, he says friendly, but they weren't like not friendly either. He says, they, he's making me feel like they have different styles. They have different styles. Mm. And he says, but within different styles, you can still really respect the artist and the entertainer and the vocal, just the pure, talent he says the pure talent of others so i could certainly respect david's uh, capacity his vocal range and his ability to perform as well but but with freddie you know freddie just brought people together he brought this energy of unity and i think that that's why his legacy is something that still is relevant today today and he says you don't see a movie about my life <laughs> oh, oh! You have so many fans too that still love and appreciate you. He says, and I, and I'm thankful, and I'm thankful for that. He's making him feel his mother, like this kind of a bond for his mother, or a love for his mother, a tremendous love for his mother. Um, George connecting love for his mother, love for his mother. And again, little dogs like Pomeranians or something. And he says there's sort of an uncertainty of things when, when someone leaves, it sort of shakes things up a bit, doesn't it? When someone takes takes an exit, he says, when they're done, it, 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 it certainly shakes things up a bit. And then for a while, there's this 
trying to find a, some kind of a semblance of order again and then you kind of get lulled into a comfort and then something happens and it shakes things up again. What are you talking about as far as... He's making me feel like he's grieving. I wonder if somebody that he cared about died recently or made a transition. Or if at the time of George Michael's death, he was grieving someone, a loved one. I'm not sure about that. I'm, he's making me feel like, like he's kind of being a little philosophical about life and, and about how death like unfolds and how people, um, the human body releases and then the spirit chooses to leave and that um, he's making me feel like there's a, like a, he's trying to like kind of understand it or put a, put a, not rationalize it. Yeah, kind of, kind of makes sense of it. That's how I would describe it. But he's making me feel like he's grieving. So either at the time of George Michael's death, he was grieving someone he loved that he lost, or now he is here in 2019 in June, someone recently, or someone may have been that he loved or cared about very much, may have been diagnosed with something that is terminal. That could be too, like a cancer, like mom could have gotten cancer or that kind of thing. He's making me feel like he has a sister also, just so you know. I don't know if it's related to her, but I'm just saying. He's also making me feel like he has a sister. All right. Well, happy birthday. I'm not going to ask you how old you would be. <laughs> he says, I'm sort of frozen in time, aren't I? <laughs> I guess you are. <laughs> he says, I can be however old I want to be. And isn't that fabulous? <laughs> he says, isn't that fabulous? That's pretty great, isn't it? Yeah. It is. So people are going to nudge me if I don't ask. So have you bumped into Freddie Mercury in the afterlife? Have you bumped into David Boy in the afterlife? Or have you bumped into anybody else in the afterlife? He says, oh, I can't tell all the secrets. Can I? Can I? He says, oh, he says to respond to viewers, he said, I would say yes. Tell them yes. And it's like just one big party, right? And he says, but it's, it's different than what you think in your mind, how it works, how it is in the afterlife. But yes, in the context of the human understanding, the human mind, yes, yes, uh, Freddie, yes, uh, uh, David, yes, but very casually. There's not like a strong bond there, you guys, just very casual. Um, and He's showing me a lot of musicians, a lot of different musicians. George Harrison, you can see that. And, okay. All right, I don't like to predict the future and I, I certainly don't like to get involved in um, making any kind of predictions and that kind of thing, so I'm not gonna share that, but. Um, your energy is gentle, but it's not like super soft and mushy gushy and warm fuzzy like it, it's been before. It's a little bit m kind of more more of a balance, kind of just a really mellow energy. So for those of you who love George Michael, if you go ahead and feel that. <sighs> feel that mellow kind of this energy. It kind of soothes the mind. He's making me feel like the mind is calming, like quieting the mind and allowing for a peaceful connection. Allowing the mind to be calm is gonna be really important for you to be clear-headed, to make good decisions, to be, to allow yourself to connect for yourself intuitively if you choose to do that. But he's very much calming the mind and soothing the mind. So if anyone has anxiety that's watching, just know that George Michael has an energy vibration that really soothes, gently soothes the mind. Very much so, very much so. And then I see yellow, the solar plexus, color of the solar plexus or the spirit chakra for connection. But he's not like, there's not this excitement or enthusiastic energy. There's just this very gentle, soothing energy that comes through with George Michael during our conversation today here at Above Life Channel. What a pleasure. Thank you so much, George. I appreciate you showing up here. Close to the timing of what it would be your earthly birthday. So thank you for showing up for that. And I'm sure the viewers appreciate it very, very much. 
Thank you for watching. This is Bridget and you've been watching a channel with George Michael in the Afterlife here at Above Life Channel where our purpose is to inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope, to encourage you to live your life because this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.